I neglected to uh, mention at the outset that uh, today is the feast day of St. John Bosco. And it's appropriate that we would celebrate the feast day of an educator during Catholic Schools Week. The link between learning and faith, knowledge and religion, has always been essential. The more we know about our faith, the more we will value it. And the more we understand our faith, the less we can be led astray by anything anyone tells us or anything we read that's not good for us. As we celebrate Catholic Schools Week in the United States, it is helpful to be reminded of the church's role in education all throughout its history and, of course, in the world today. For centuries past, and all around the globe, especially in the poorest and remote places today, no one but the Catholic Church is providing education. Did you know that the university, its very design and curriculum, was devised by the Church? During the early part of the second millennium, a period we're sometimes told in school was called the Dark Ages, following the collapse of the Roman, Byzantine, and other Western empires, monasteries preserved Greek and Latin texts. Scripture, they preserved sacred scripture, and they kept learning alive. And some centuries later, centru uh, centers of learning were established first in Paris, Bologna, and Oxford in literature, art, philosophy, theology, mathematics, and the sciences were taught. St. Thomas Aquinas prepared his Summa, Theologi Summa Theologica, his seminal work of theology and summary of the faith for an undergraduate student, which says something about the standards of that time. But the church's vital role in education is obviously far more expansive than just the university level. The church has and continues to provide education at all levels, from early childhood and all through life. Today, as I said at the outset, is the feast day of St. John Bosco, often known as Don Bosco. He was a priest in Turin in Italy in the middle of the 19th century. And in his century, he saw some of the side effects of the Industrial Revolution as families had left farms to take factory jobs in the new big cities. He saw slum boys and many others who, absent the structure of their villages, were at risk of crime and destructive behavior. And there were no schools for them. So he developed a way to educate them in basics like reading, writing, and arithmetic. But also, he and his colleagues taught them useful skills so that they could be tradespeople and would be qualified to be able to get jobs that would enable them to support themselves and ultimately, ultimately their families. And he and his colleagues formed the religious order that we know today as the Salesians. Just this past Saturday, the 27th of January, we celebrated the feast of St. Angela Marici. In the late 15th century in Italy, she was concerned that poor farm girls were not getting an education. And so she formed the religious order that we know as the Ursulines today. And they still carry out that work of educating women all around the globe. St. Francis Xavier Cabrini was born in Italy, but she came to the United States in the 1880s at the request of Pope Leo XIII, who was concerned that newly arriving immigrants here in the United States were not getting an education. And in the 35 years that she was here ministering before her death, she founded over 200 schools, most in the big cities that had been concentrations of immigrants. This work is being carried out all over the world. And it's being carried out in our parishes, like it is at St. John's in Canton and some of the other schools that have been here this week. 
on this feast day of St. John Bosco, it is good to be reminded that education provides fertile ground for a rich life of faith. <laughs>